Hello and welcome to the Phoenix Phenomenon. I'm your host, ghostwriter and writing mentor, Roxanne mccardio Kane. Thank you for joining us for another episode where we delve into the transformative process of becoming an author and talk to the change makers who know this journey all too well. Today, I have with me Helen Slater, the author of Survive and Thrive Through Your Separation. Helen's separation more than 10 years ago left her emotionally challenged and financially damaged. Originally from the UK, Helen came to Australia in 2002 and has been based on the Sunshine Coast ever since. A mum to two teen to teenagers, she's had her fair share of life challenges from work and relationships to relocation and financial challenges, ultimately ending up in becoming embroiled in the family law legal system. Helen had no legal experience, yet she negotiated her own family law legal proceedings as a self-represented litigant on property settlement, children arrangements and divorce with very favourable outcomes. Spurred on by friends and family, she's combined her 30 years of experience and personal development and her self-representing legal experience to help educate and empower others through her coaching and mentoring business, Separation Insights, as well as her best-selling book, Survive and Thrive Through Your Separation. Hello, Helen. Thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, my pleasure. Happy to be here, Roxy. Thank you for your time. I know you're a very busy lady. <laughs> so I'd love for you to share a little bit of your backstory with our listeners today so they can get some insights into your personal journey to getting to where you were and writing your book. Okay, well, um, it's a long journey, a long process, but my backstory is uh, that I was going through a separation and divorce, and um, I wanted to write about it and the process of my experience as not only a self-represented person in the law courts, but also about writing a book and having that information and doing some good with it. So that's that, that's really where, where I'm at with it. I came to the, you know, I've come to Australia um, 20 years ago now nearly. And, it, you know, I, I thought if I can add value to my journey here with other people and share insights, then where's the harm in that? So that's, um, that's how the book came to be. I don't know if that answers the question that you want with regard to the backstory, but. Yeah, absolutely. And so you did move to the Sunshine Coast from the UK. I did. Um, yeah. yeah. So tell me, tell me about the decision to move. Okay. Well, I was did a backpacking journey. I had my previous life was in the corporate world, Korea, um, flying around the globe, delivering training and development and personal uh, development's always been in my background. And I've also got psychology in my academic achievements. And I've sort of paired those together. And got to 30 and thought if I don't take a break now I'm going to have some sort of burnout so decided to do the backpacking uh, in the day when you could buy a ticket and just fly east or west and just keep going around and um, I took the west route and ended up in Australia and thought I like this place I think I might come and study here so after a year and a bit of traveling I came back to Australia and um, started studying here and at that time met my now ex-husband, um, and that's how I came to be on the coast. So I've traveled a lot of Australia, but my ex was from the Sunshine Coast and it's such a beautiful place that uh, I never left. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it happens to the best of us, doesn't but, uh, it, the Sunshine Coast? <laughs> so. That's right, that's right. Living up to its name on most occasions too. So it's beautiful yeah. here, yeah. Perfect, all right. And do you mind sharing how long it was that you were actually married for before the um, the separation and divorce came about? Sure, yeah, I was married for seven years and I believe that is actually considered medium, a medium uh, length of time, wow. uh, which, it's quite short really when you think about it but in in the the today's numbers yeah seven years is um considered quite a, a good effort the seven year itch i suppose is one of those um elements that comes into play but yeah so that's that's how it was 
Okay, wonderful. And we won't, we don't want to get into too much detail because I know a lot of it is covered in your book. So we want we want people to to pick it up, survive and thrive through your separation. That's um, right. But can you tell us a bit about why you decided to self represent and not access, you know, like legal aid or professional legal services when it came time to to go through the the legal process? Sure. Well, actually, the, it. Um... It was almost forced upon me, if I'm being honest. Mm. Uh, so um, unfortunately, my ex um, was quite difficult. It was not an amicable separation. And after seeking some legal advice, uh, it was then suggested that because of his bad behavior, um, it would probably save me money and time and effort and energy and my sanity if I did self-represent course I was terrified of this option because it's mm. like I'm not a lawyer I've got no legal qualifications I'm not even good with numbers let alone you know standing up and talking about um, property and all those sort of things so so it was a bit of baptism of fire uh, but in the long run it was actually a really good um, a really good experience and I was able to take control of it. I was able to save money. I was able to get my mindset right so that I was able to negotiate on property settlement, on children's arrangements, and also um, complete the divorce. And it's interesting, Roxy, because a lot of, I didn't, the, the property pool wasn't big, right? So I, so I didn't really have much money, which is another reason why lawyers were saying, you know, you're best to self-represent. Mm. And the legal aid wasn't really open to me at the time either. So uh, it was just, well, let's just grab it and run with it. And it was a very, um, it was quite an intense learning experience. So the book that I've written, obviously, is about, it's part memoir, which is my story and what happened to me. And then it's the legal information. So all this stuff that I've accumulated over the process and is everywhere, um, I've condensed it, the, the essentials into this book. And then with my coaching business, um, so I didn't touch on that. Yeah, so I'm a coach, I'm a coach and mentor for people who, so a divorce, you know, for separation, separation coach, divorce coach. I mean, I do do life coaching, but the predominantly my clients are those who are going through separation. And um, so I bring along frameworks and some of the psychology stuff that I've had back in the day. So I've combined my coaching mentoring with the legal information and my story so that I can provide a holistic approach, if you like, to someone who is going through separation. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so that's all, you know, in the book as well. So not only is it, oh, this is what happened to me and here's some legal information and here's how to get your mindset right or here's how to get organized. It's, it's those sorts of things that come into play. So because Roxy I'm sure I don't need to tell you this and hopefully you won't be in this position but when you go through a separation you are challenged on so many levels you're challenged emotionally mentally physically socially financially spiritually everything is overwhelm and overload and I think if you can come to someone like myself or at least have information mm. that can help get you in a good space to start processing and and acting on stuff um that's that's got to be a plus and that's what that's what i'm hoping the you know the book brings well the feedback i'm getting suggested does so. <laughs> excellent it's always a good start yeah that's always a bonus <laughs> yeah well when you say feedback i mean we've we've got to say here you know amazon bestseller already so yeah, yeah let's do the happy dance the <laughs> <laughs> that's right i'm very proud of that as well that's you know and and i'm I never went out thinking I'm writing a book to be a bestseller. Mm. I went out to write a book to help people. And the bestseller obviously is just the cherry on the top. And I, and I hope it continues, you know, the more, the more people that buys it, gets it, has access to it. You know, Roxy, you don't need to buy it. If you don't want to, you can get it from the library. You can learn it from a friend. The libraries are stocking it now. Uh, Sun, even uh, here on the coast, the Suncoast Community Legal Service, who are helping people who mm. are in that position where they don't have potentially the finances or they don't know where to go or even where to start. Um, they have copies. In fact, a claim to fame is one of my books got pinched from the reception area. And I just saw that as a massive compliment rather than, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, so, but anyway, a little aside, a bit of a side. Yeah. <laughs> obviously a much needed resource if people are well, going to those, yeah. <laughs> indeed, indeed. But, yeah. 
Excellent. Now, um, coming back to your journey, um, you say in the book, the whole process, the legal process for you took about three years. Yep. Now, when you first signed up and said, yep, I'm going to self-represent, did you have any inkling that that's how long it was going to take? No, I thought maybe three to six months mm. had a push, you know, coming up to Christmas and we'll get it all done and dusted by the end of the year. But no, that's not how it, uh, that's not how it operates. And it, it's because I was in the system mm. and um, there's lots of different ways. But once you once you're in the system and you've initiated proceedings, you have to confirm something to get out of the system. Right? You have to agree between you to get out. Whereas if you can go in amicably and you both know what you're in for and you both got the information and you can stay out of the of the court and um, and it's a much quicker process. Mm. But like I say, my ex's behavior was, um, yeah, a contributing factor to a three year process. And I know, and I've heard stories of they're going on for more than three years, but um, that, that's just my personal story and everyone's is different, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And now you've created this amazing resource that people can use, but tell me when you, when you first set, set off on your journey, how did you, how did you even know where to start on, you know, upskilling and gaining the knowledge that you needed to be able to, to go through each of the steps required for, for the different things you needed to negotiate on? Well, I am quite um, into, I, I am, I love information. I do love information. And in this day and age, uh, obviously it was all accessible. It's accessible on the internet. It's accessible in uh, workshops and libraries and all, all those sorts of places. So I basically just immerse myself in everything. And I attended free workshops that lawyers run or the Sunshine Coast Community Legal Service run and I and I go on the and I went on the website to see what the um, what was on the website of the at the time it was the Federal um, Circuit Court of Australia and I just I, I there was so much Roxy so, I mean even processing it now my brain is like it's going to explode and I've already taken the bits I need you yes. know uh, because I say, you know, even in my book, lawyers, they train for years to get this information. And and that was part of the reason for me writing the book. I was mm. so frustrated that there wasn't something that was succinct that said, oh, property settlement, here's the information you need. Oh, children's arrangements, here's the information you need. Or So it, it was a process of, in fact, how I wrote, almost like how I wrote the book, what do I want to achieve and then work backwards you know where's my starting point what information do I need where is that information who can help me what's my time frame you know so um and talking to people who have already been there plus I do know well I do know quite a few lawyers now and uh, so I would buy them a coffee and um, get them to point me in the right direction even if it was the best website or the best article so got to utilize those resources Roxy <laughs> absolutely absolutely people yeah. underestimate the power of that actually just giving you know inviting someone for a coffee and they're usually more than happy to to help you out so that's right absolutely I mean hello <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think that's how we first started so yeah it totally yeah. is yeah, <laughs> so, right. the power of coffee yeah <laughs> I need a yeah endorsement now from a coffee company. Thanks. That's just it's a thought. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Now, um, you say on the back of your book um, that you were actually spurred on by friends and family to actually write about your journey and to share the knowledge. So I'm curious to find out, you know, how long it was between them planting that seed and you actually sitting down and going, yep, this is, I'm doing this now. Right. Well, because I was so frustrated about it all and then I was doing all the research and then my friends and family could see me doing the research and then they could see me self-representing mm. and then they saw me having these favorable outcomes yeah it was three years in so they started saying you know oh you could really help other people Helen I know a friend who's going through this and I've got another friend who can't afford a lawyer and oh my sister's got this problem and my brother-in-law's got that problem you know so I started to take it on board quite seriously when I was pairing up, God, why wasn't this around when I started? Yes. Versus of oh, the people saying, this would be a great resource. Why don't you do this? So I started putting things on paper. That was about seven, eight years ago. Uh, and it, it was just grabs. You know, it was there was no structure to it. There wasn't anything like that. But then I started to research, how do I write a book? How 
because everyone's got a book in them. I'm sure you have that uh, mantra as well. But I think having something here and here and getting it out there is a very different process. Mm. And um, so then not only that, so then I've started exploring the project of how do I get a book out there? So with friends and family saying, you know, and Helen, you are the sort of person that wants to help people and it's part of who you are. It's part of your business. Personal development's been your career. Mm. It just all aligned, Roxy. And I just thought, right, let, let's just do it. So for the first so for the first seven years, <laughs> it was pretty much buffing everything down. Then year eight, uh, I started to get a bit more serious about it and schedule time. And then last year when COVID hit, I just spent every week, almost every day, I would say, writing and mm. thinking this is my opportunity because I couldn't see my clients. A lot of my client based work is face to face mm -hmm. and um, with COVID hitting and Anyway, long story short, I got myself a project plan together to write and find out who can help me, who can help me with this process as well. And I don't know if you'd like me to talk about that now, but yeah, of course, I'll certainly share too. that. So I'm, I go with, the, I, I write very conversationally. You may have got that in the, in the book. I write as I, as I speak. So I needed someone to come in who um, could potentially help with editing, obviously a great cover designer, uh, and someone just to keep me on track with those little things and maybe some marketing mm. because I decided to self-represent because I'm a control freak. That's right. Yeah. It's all self, right? Yeah. <laughs> Self-publishing, self-representing. Uh, so I thought, well, if I self-publish, I can have more control over it, but I can still bring in these great experts that, and mm. people with that expertise to help me in the areas that I have no um, strength in really or no no aspects so I got someone to edit it for me a, a young lady called um, Anna Tink and I had a um, formatter so proofreader and formatter who actually got the book into a format so that could be uploaded to Amazon and all those places that uh, is out there on the, in the internet or wherever yes. um, and uh also the book uh, cover designer so they were my three that was my team me and my team of three and I'm pretty proud of what's come out look I read it now Roxy and I'm like oh I need to change that and that format is not great uh, oh that word there right I'm mm, gonna tweak that so I'm already thinking second edition yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know what's uh, what's changed and what's changed in the um in the legal side mm. of things when I first started self-representing on the property settlement, um, it was a four-step process. Since then, it's become a five-step process. So there's a different dynamic at play. Even the name of the courts changed from, you know, the F Federal Court of Australia, isn't it? Federal Circuit Court of Australia that's merging in with family court. And there's things that are constantly changing in, um, in the world of the legalities of stuff. So mm. th th there probably will come a time when not only will it be tweaked, but it will be, you know, revised as well. Yeah. So, yeah, keep up with the times, sign of the times. Absolutely. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> and, and I'd love to, um, I'd love for you to share some insights into what the writing process was like for you. So you, you've gone from kind of haphazardly um, chucking stuff into a document. What, what yeah. sort of shifted for you when you did start sitting down every day and working on it a little by little? Uh the outcome. So I had a vision board as well. Uh, I had a little vision board with my, you know, get this book, you know, published author, get it done, help people, all those things. So the end in mind, always begin with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. And then having the time to do it. So making the time, scheduling time in my diary, uh, you know, the girls, my girl, I have two, two teenage girls and you know, they know that when mum's in her office space, she's in her office space, she's working. Yeah. So I would actually schedule time to work on it. So there was a structure and then there was the vision and it just all merged together. And I just got to um, the process of making the time, getting something done, celebrating small, small wins. You know, it might just be uh, finishing a chapter or finding a book designer, whatever it was, it was like, excellent, one step closer, one step closer. 
And sometimes I'd write, I would write all day and I'm like, there's nothing coming out or I've written and it's garbage or it's, and you get quite deflated, but then you think, well, that is all part of the process. If you could just write, 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 and it's all wonderful, everyone would be doing it. And it would be an easy process, but it isn't. But it wasn't for me. Maybe there are people out there. <laughs> that's not me. That's not my makeup. Um, but it was always persistence, celebrate the small wins, get your team on board, obviously your friends also checking in that that's quite a high accountability and as a coach myself mm -hmm. I do that with my clients yes. so when my friends are coming over for coffee and they're like oh how are you going what chapter are you on you know it's like mm, yes what chapter am I? Oh, <laughs> you know I've got Debbie coming around next week I said to her you know I'd be on chapter three by then so yeah, you know, yeah. having yeah. those benchmarks and the milestones to to take it that level but yeah yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we all come across um, with it being such a creative process, writing and um, even something that's informative. It's still a creative process to, to pull it all together in a way right. that flows. Um, so when you do have those days that you, you, you said you spend a day writing and then you're like, oh, that's garbage. Like, how do you then pick yourself back up and go, OK, you know, and refocus and just keep going the next day? Well, it's a bad day, not a bad life, right? That's what my teenage daughter tells me. It's a bad day, mum, not a bad life. And there's always something to take out of it because it's like, okay, well, I know that's not what I want to cover. So what do I do want to cover? And it's an elimination process. But Roxy, one thing that is really, and I, I cannot stress this enough that I love is mind mapping. Mm. And once I got into the process of mind mapping, so let's say I took a chapter and it was on... Uh, property settlement so you put the pro you know and you put it in the middle there and then you just branch you just brain dump everything that's going on okay figures numbers time frames who brought what what's it worth now where's that hiding what's the go and then that becomes a real great structure for which pit bits you know you can pick out and start to get the proper detail and the non-garbage stuff you know into <laughs> into into words and onto the chapter onto the page and so that, so my mapping, I, I mean, I love it. I, I do it with everything. I do it with to-do lists. I do it with chapter writing. I do it with book writing. I do it with what's going to go on the cover. How am I going to market the book? All that sort of stuff. And I think it's, I think if everyone can learn how to mind map, the, it would really accelerate the process of learning, not only learning what you want and what you want to get out there, but also the outcome itself and reaching goals and communicating and, because it's an evolving process, right? Everything's an evolving process. And that's part of the book. Well, that's garbage. It's okay. It's an evolving process, yeah, right? That's right. <laughs> we'll get there in the end. So, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And and that leads me to another thing too, you know, marketing. Um, often mm. people spend all this time writing something absolutely amazing. And then they've got this book and they're like, okay, now what? Um, so marketing is such an important element to take into consideration. And, and you've obviously, you know, found some secret sauce to get to Amazon bestseller status. <laughs> um, so yeah, what sort of advice would you give to, to people to think early on about marketing and, and what they need to do? Well, I don't have the magic solution, unfortunately, but what, what I would say is you do have to be thinking of your marketing right from the go because it's okay having a great product, but the world needs to know that it's out there, right? You need mm. to have this awareness for it. This is what we're doing today. This is all part of the marketing too, right? So um, every, I, I just think every opportunity you can take and anything you see, just go for it and, and remember that there is no there's, there's no wrong there's no there's no wrong way to do it i mean mm. word of mouth's one way and speak to people but the amazon the amazon bestseller um it wasn't its genre let's just be clear with that it's uh, it's not the whole of amazon so i, I need to put my disclaimer up right well, now well yeah that's but, yeah but, that's, that's yeah. actually a good important distinction actually because some people aren't aware of that so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so um but still you know and it's still it's up and down up and down all the time so um i think if you can find that you find the right niche for it the right market for it and then go for it because not everyone needs this book. Hopefully you will never need this book, Foxy. Uh, but the people that do, um, that's where, you know, that's where my market is, whether it's with strategic alliances like lawyers and counsellors and, and mortgage brokers and accountants and whoever's coming up against someone who is going through separation mm. versus, you know, Joe blogs in the street whose sister's uh, going through it or whose friend's going through it. So, yeah, because marketing, you know, you've got to be 
you've got to be on the ball with that. And, and honestly, it is, it's not my area of expertise. Um, and I have just recently decided that I probably will get people on board with that and start networking a bit more and start turning up and speaking and taking engagements and all those things so that I can get it out there because it is... I'm not just saying this to be biased. It is no, a great totally. resource. <laughs> Absolutely. And I love that you're so passionately connected to it. So that's oh. when you know that you've you've poured your heart and soul oh. into this. So awesome. it's so beautiful. And I have actually I have actually put quite a lot out there in it. Um mm. I haven't I haven't really held back. Uh so it's quite I've been quite vulnerable and um yeah. So I hope it is going to do some some good. Absolutely. And tell me about that process of you. Like, I know some people can feel quite challenged to, to feel brave enough to lay it all out there between the pages of a book. So what was that like for you? You know, obviously you've got all of this amazing knowledge and research and information that is really practical for people, but you've also accompanied that with a lot of, you know, the emotional challenges and things that yeah. you were facing at the time as well. So how was it a lot more difficult for you to kind of open up about those sides of things while writing? You know, I want to say yes, but it wasn't really because I thought if I'm writing this book and it is authentically me and what happened to me and it can really help people, I'm just going to bear my soul in a way that people can handle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so, look, it is, there's, there's, we, we, I touch on things in there about DV, I touch on things there. So right at the start, the, the, the DV stuff, and then mm. the frustration with children's arrangements and getting some agreement on property settlements and all those things, right the way up to, you know, the 10 years later where I'm back in the dating scene and you know all that sort of stuff and it's interesting a lot of the um people that have read the women in particularly uh in particular a, a lot of the single mums who have got in touch with me uh, have said you know oh that you know that last chapter just resonated <laughs> with me so well I laughed I cried you know it was like, so I thought well great because I think if someone can feel an emotion as well mm. they, they connect better to it they get the message more you know um well for me personally I, that is that's true if I if I can feel something whether it's a, in a book or a movie the message is you know comes stronger so I think um I think that also is is uh, the same for for this book and my story too Beautiful. And I'm one of the biggest advocates around for that. So I'm so glad that it's come out of your mouth. Yay! <laughs> connection, emotional connection is everything. So Absolutely. That, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. All right. And so the, the title of the show is, is The Phoenix Phenomenon. And I've called it that because I feel like the process of becoming an author is so transformative for people and in different ways. So, mm -hmm. you know, for some people, it's the catalyst to going on and having a really amazingly successful business. And for other people, it's a, a really healing journey and you know a bit of catharticism almost mm. about sharing their journey so I'm curious to find out where where you sit with all of this and what you feel your transformation was while you were writing your book you know it's probably a bit of everything so it was quite a healing process because I was able to put it all down I was able to celebrate getting through it I survived it and then I'm you know, and I am thriving now. I'm very happy and healthy and my girls are healthy and my life is wonderful at the moment. You know, it's really good. It's, and then there's the side of it that is, well, that is part of my business. You know, I am helping people and here's another arm of it. So let's do this. And if it can make money, what a bonus that is. But that was not the driving force. Of course. So, so you've got this side of, you know, helping people and helping myself and money and then exposure to, you know, um, the information and there's a little bit of ego in there, but not, not a... Not a huge look at me, I'm a bestseller type, but it's a yeah. bit like, look what I did. This is yeah. this is my win, right? And and Amazon have said, this is your win too, Helen. And I'm like, yes, let's do this, you know. So, which also I think gives a credibility for my other work, which means I can get involved in. So I have a, um, a another business called Separation Insights, mm -hmm. which I have formed alongside a family, an experienced family law lawyer. And we are providing information to people 
who are going through separation so that they are better prepared. The whole premise of my book is if you are in a better mindset, you are able to make better decisions. So if you are more informed, so you've got all the information you need and you're in a, you know, a space that is good and, mm. and you're less emotional, all your decisions will be a, a, of better decisions. So it's more, it's, you make more sensible decisions. If that makes sense. Um, I'm waffling on a bit now, but the no, whole I totally, totally get it. I mean, yeah, and like you said at the very start of the call, like going through a separation or a divorce, it affects every aspect of your life. And it's, you know, emotionally, physically challenging. And that's a lot to process when you do have to make these really important decisions. So, that's right. And yeah. I think when you've got someone neutral, well, not even neutral. I mean, I am, I, I, I call myself um, a separation coach and mentor because as a mentor, I've been there. So I have that empathy. I understand what they're going through mm. and the challenges and the things that can um, get on top of them or where they overwhelm. But I also can bring in this element that makes it easier for them to manage it. I'm not saying better. I'm just, you know, it just gives them something to think about so that they can get more organized. They can get more prepared. They can feel more empowered. Uh, mm -hmm. So, it, yeah, I think um, that was really the whole reason for the book. The whole reason for the book is here's some information. I did it. You can do it. Go get it. Really. Awesome. I love that. Excellent. And for those who have uh, connected with yourself and your your amazing energy, which I love, by the way, <laughs> oh, thank um, you. <laughs> <laughs> and want to tap into this, um, this amazing resource and, and connecting with your pearls of wisdom and your advice, yeah. how can they get a hold of a copy of your book? Well, uh, there's obviously my website, which is just my name, www.helenslater.com.au. Make sure you get the AU on, otherwise you're going to be seeing Helen Slater, Supergirl. Uh, the actress. <laughs> Who is this imposter? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you, woman? Uh, so it's just helenslater.com.au. Or, of course, Amazon, just type in the book name. Uh, libraries, like I say, the libraries also have them. Uh, booksellers now, hopefully, will be stocking them soon uh, here on the coast, like Harry Hartogs and those sort of places. But uh, And... If you do go to my website, there's always links to get in touch with me. I do personalized sign copies. I do discounts as well every now and then. You can win a copy if you sign up for my newsletter. There's lots of different avenues to get in there. Uh, you can even go on eBay. I've uh, I've noticed Ooh. quite a few people are selling my book on eBay. There's Not me. Market on eBay. <laughs> yeah, go for it. It's like whatever, as long as it's coming. My royalty checks coming to me, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know that did make me laugh. I googled my book to see, you know, where actually is it? And yeah, uh, yeah there it is on eBay with a few people. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And how about professionally? Like if people want to access um, your services on a professional level, how can they best reach you for, for that aspect? So again, Roxy, my website is helenslater.com.au and my email address is helen at helenslater.com.au. And if they wanted to get on, you know, Facebook, uh, Instagram, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm slowly getting into the uh, social media platforms, but it's sort of slow and steady. Again, another reason why I need some marketing expertise. But if you Google Helen Slater or Helen Slater 6S, um, all my stuff is done in sixes, six stages, six steps, six strategies. And obviously it's a play on words, the number six and the letter S. That will usually bring up, uh, if you Google Helen Slater Success, that'll come up with all my links in my digital footprint for the last five, six years. Amazing. So, yeah. And because I'm a curious person always, why, why have you always felt connected to the number six? Well, I'm born on the sixth. So that's one thing. And um, like I say, everything just seems to have transpired in stages of six. So I thought, well, I'll run with that. And plus the six S... S is my surname and success. I'll have a bit of that if you don't mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why, why wouldn't I is more of the question. Uh, yeah, so that, yeah, so that's, yeah, Amazing. just resonates with me. Yeah, yeah, no, that's perfect. And it's lovely when you can get that, that alignment going in, in multiple areas, you know, you're onto a good thing. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Cool. Excellent. Well, thank you so, so much for your time today, Helen, and for sharing your incredible journey of, of writing Survive and Thrive through your separation um, and being very candid as well with, um, with some of the things you've shared today. Really appreciate that. 
And yeah, if anyone has connected with Helen, I really highly recommended that you get in touch with her, get a copy of the book. And um, yeah, I'm sure she will be able to help you through whatever it is that you need help with going forward. So thank, thank you, Roxy. You. I would like to ditto on all of that. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. I'm honestly, even if they just want to get in touch, my email, I'm, I'm, I'm always checking emails. I might not get back to you straight away, but um, I do see them. So, yeah. Wonderful. Thanks so much again, Helen. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks, Roxy.